Hey there, you're listening to the Girls Talking Life podcast, and I'm your host, Johanna. If you're like me, you love time with friends. I always leave feeling encouraged, inspired to try something different, or I've learned something new. So why not continue to grow even when we can't be with our girlfriends? We're not made to do life on our own. So in each episode of this show, I'll bring you a girl and her story to give you refreshing ideas to stir your soul. Let's walk this road together. Are you ready to talk life? Welcome to the show. I am so honored that you're spending this time with us. If you like what you're hearing on Girls Talking Life, would you share the show with a friend this week or consider leaving a review on iTunes to help others find the show? I would love for more women to be encouraged by the stories of my guests. Today I'm talking with Holly Starr. Holly is a singer, songwriter, and worship leader who began writing her songs at a young age as a way to share Jesus with her community. Over 10 years and five albums later, Holly has traveled the country encouraging people to have faith both when times are easy and when times are hard. Holly has two top 25 radio hits, which is rare for an independent artist, and her music videos have collectively earned nearly 6 million collective YouTube views. Today, Holly and I talk about how she got started, how she ended up opening for Leanne Rhymes right at the beginning of her career, and what touring is like for her now. Holly and I talk about how she met her husband and the moment she knew he was more than just a friend. She also tells us about struggling with body image for a season and how God changed her mind and the song that she wrote about her growth through it. In addition to her music career, Holly is also the creator of the Yes Necklace. She shares how the idea for the necklace came about. Holly talks about her relationship with her grandma star and how the necklace turned into not only a reminder to trust God, but a ministry for widows who are often overlooked. Here's my conversation with Holly. Hi, Holly. Thank you so much for joining me on Girls Talking Life today. Hey, thanks for having me. I wanted to know if you would just start by introducing yourself, tell me who you are and where you live, and then who the people in your life are. Well, my name is Holly Starr, and I am from central Washington State. I got married three years ago to my husband, Chris, and uh, I travel as a a touring musician full-time throughout the year. We lead worship a lot at different churches and put on concerts. Um, I'm an independent artist, so we run everything ourselves. So my husband actually gets to tour with me, and he plays the bass guitar and electric guitar, and uh, he's also a CPA on the side. So (laughs) right now is tax season, uh, which is busy for us, but it's good good to be home for a little while. Okay. You started your singing and songwriting at a really early age. How did that go? What inspired you to start? Well, I was really involved in my church's youth group uh, worship team, and my youth pastor at the time was kind of like our youth band leader, so he uh, really encouraged me in uh, the songs that I had started writing in the middle of that season. I was like seventh to eighth grade, ninth, and then all the way through high school, Uh, so that was like really, really a formative time for me, and seeing that I, I could use songs as a means to reach out to my friends at school. Um, So that's kind of where it all started. Okay, I love that. You recorded your first EP when you were 15. That is crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. I was like, what is going on with my life? (laughs) What song was that? Or what what collection of songs? Um, It's a project that's not actually released anymore. So people can't find it. It's like, we only made like 100 of them. Uh Um, but uh, yeah, it was called No Love Like This. And uh, those the people who were in the youth band with me, uh, we recorded that collection of songs and put it on MySpace. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just such a fun, fun time of just discovering music and the ability to use it as a means to encourage people and, and faith. You posted recently that you opened for Leanne Rhymes in 2009. How did you get there and what was that like? Yeah, so I so I released my first album when I was fifteen, and then um, that was so that was like the beginning. I think I was a freshman, uh, freshman sophomore, and then um, we put those songs on MySpace. And then a producer from the Seattle area heard those songs, and he reached out to me and said, "Hey, I'd love to record a full length album with you." So that first one that I did was an EP. There's only like five or six songs. I can't remember exactly. So we met met up with him. He ended up uh, recording my first full-length album, to make a long story short. And we released that in October of 2008. So that was uh, the beginning of my senior year. Um, And in in our town, there was a neighboring town close by who just built a town Toyota Arena Center. And they were bringing in Leanne Rhymes for their first event for the 
opening of the arena. And her, Leanne's opener that was on the tour with her at the time couldn't make it to the show. So they reached out to the local Christian music promoter and asked her if, if they knew anybody who might be up for opening. Um, so she threw my name in the hat and I was like, whoa, 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 I'm just starting you to <laughs> But then she got the phone call from Leanne's people and they told told her that they wanted me to open. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. But it was it was awesome. An awesome experience that I look back on really fondly now. So I have girls, they're eight and 11. And I'm thinking, what would I be thinking as a parent if this was my daughter? (laughs) How did your parents react to that? I have the best family. My parents have been supportive from day one of the songs I've written. And just, I mean, they've always been supportive of anything I really wanted to try doing. So my family is amazing. They were, they were right there with me the whole day. Um, Obviously leading up to that event, I had a lot of training to do as far as how to, how to be on a stage that huge. I mean, I've been in front of like 500 people before that. Um, but it wasn't my audience. It was, I was on a worship team that was leading worship or a youth group conference. So it wasn't like a, it wasn't even comparable. So I had to learn how to handle that. So my mom went with me to lots of, uh, like stage coaching lessons over in Seattle. And my dad has been supportive since I was little too, just right there to cheer me on. So they're, they're awesome. That's amazing. I like that. You, when you were younger, you struggled with body image. Yeah. And you were gracefully healed and walked through that by God. And uh, you ended up writing a song about it. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, totally. Um, so it was actually during that time in high school when I was just getting into music and my whole world was kind of changing. Um, in that season is when I struggled with body image. There was somebody in my life I really respected at the time who made a, made a comment to me just about the way my body looked and they didn't mean it in an off, in a rude way. It was just kind of an offhanded statement they threw out there, but I took that and just kind of wrapped my whole world around it and began feeling like I wasn't measuring up to the standard that I th- thought I thought I needed to measure up to. So it kind of threw me into the spiral of just being consumed with what was I eating? How, how much was I working out? What did other people think of the way I looked? And it was just a nasty, hard season. And I just remember kind of coming to the very end of my rope in that season and, and getting before God and saying, Lord, I, I can't struggle with this the rest of my life, but I don't know how to get out of, out of this place. Cause I knew that if I continued to eat this way, to think this way, like I would just, I wouldn't live very long. So I prayed, God, would you, would you heal me from this struggle? And I remember before that, I felt like the conversation that was happening between me and God, obviously not verbal, but just like the impressions he was putting in my heart was like, Holly, do you believe in who I say I am? So I kind of walked her through this process of saying, yeah, I do believe who you say you are. And then the next question I felt like he led me to was, well, then do you believe that I can be your healer? And so you can't really say one and not believe the other. Like you can't say, I believe in who you say you are and not believe that he can heal you. And I think that was the struggle for me was I, I had to choose to believe again that he could be my healer. He could walk me out of that season. So I prayed that God, would you heal me, be the healer that you are. And shortly after that, he, he laid this idea on my heart. I say that he did this because I look back now and I can just see his hand all in it. At the time, you don't always know those things, but this idea um, came to my mind that I would give up something in my life that meant a lot to me. And for a whole year, I would pray for that healing, just kind of as a reminder to myself that I'm choosing to believe that God is who he says he is. And also just because God calls us to pray and to pray without ceasing. And so I did that. And about two thirds of the way through that year of prayer, I woke up one day and I noticed this like shift happening in me. And the only way I can describe it is like, you know, you're heading in one direction and all of a sudden your trajectory is just, it wasn't like I was healed overnight or my world was completely different, but I noticed something was different. And um, I remember remember asking myself like or asking God like is this you like is is my life changing or is this just my hormones you know <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
And uh, so I was like, well, we'll just wait and see what happens. And um, one day led to another and, and the journey continued to be going in a different direction than where I was at. And so for, for who I was that day versus who I am today, it's like 100% different. It's like my mind, the way that God has taught me and challenged me to believe in who he is and who I am has transformed my life. And so I ended up writing a song just kind of as a a song of gratitude and thankfulness for the work that God has done in my life through all of that called Through My Father's Eyes. And it just says like, you changed my life by changing my mind. That's the chorus. You healed all that was broken inside. Uh, And basically the, the heart behind those lyrics is me saying like, you know, one of the one of the scriptures in the Bible that said it's in Ephesians. It says that He likes to wash us, His church, with the Word. Like that's that it, that's what He does, and so that's how I felt like God was renewing my mind in that process of healing. It wasn't like an overnight thing. It was like He was continuing to feed me with the truth of who He is and who I, I am. And one of the things that He says that I am is that I am good. I am beautiful. And beauty is not defined. The, the, the false lie that I was believing up to that point was that beauty was defined by culture and the people around me and the things they said about me. But when in reality, beauty is defined by who God says I am. So if God says that that I am beautiful, it doesn't matter what I look like, doesn't matter what I smell like, doesn't matter <laughs> what my life is like, the accomplishments I've made. Beauty is not defined by that at all. It's God says, I am beautiful the way that I am. He says, you are beautiful the way you are. It means you are beautiful. End of story. And if, if I wrap my mind around that and choose to believe that, then I can walk in confidence and not fear. So i am just been so grateful for the way that God has washed my mind with his word, washed my life with the truth of scripture and the promise that he gives us all throughout, not only our history of our life, but in the history of, of the church and in the scriptures. It's just a huge gift. So that's where that song came from. And I think that's such a great message because if it isn't every woman that struggles with that, you know, it's such a high percentage where yeah. that's a concern yeah. ongoing or just at least a time in your life. Totally. And I've met so many people. I mean, it was, I was, I was terrified to write that song because I was putting it all out there for people to know that that I was actually going through stuff the last several years before that. But but God has even provided more healing in sharing the story. It's like, I, I, you know, I got to that point to write the song and I felt like he'd done such a huge work in my life. And now I look back and I'm like, there was still so much that he had to do and, and has been doing since then too. And it's been awesome. Oh, so it was a blessing to you as well as other people. That's yeah, that's yeah. Better. It's cool to cool to meet people, share your story, and then hear them tell you that they struggle with the same thing. You know, it's like there's so many out there. Absolutely, and it makes it just easier and not you know not just a a lonely, strange thing that is happening to me. Totally, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you had that one big opening for Leanne Rhymes, and it sounds like you've been touring pretty much ever since then. Is that the case? Yeah, yeah. So we um, we did that show, and then within the next year, so 2010 is kind of the marker year for me when I went full time. I did shows before that, obviously, but it wasn't like jumping all the way in. So yeah, since 2010, I've been on the road, and it's been an awesome opportunity to see the country and see the church in different parts of, uh, well, mostly the United States, and, and it's been really cool. What is touring like? We go, so it kind of depends on the season. So a lot of the times our, our year is kind of like, well, July, December, January, um, those months are usually I'm on the road, literally in our van for the whole month <laughs> and churches every other night or every night, just depending on how things are laid out. And that's exhausting. You're, you're going, you're playing your concert, going to a hotel, falling asleep, waking up the next morning, driving four hours to the next venue, loading in, doing the whole setup and sound check and then tear down and leaving it. So it's like, it's a very busy time, but super fun. You feel re- really fulfilled at the end of each day, which is awesome. Um, but then there's other uh, seasons where we're gone for like a weekend. We fly out to a show, we come back. Or we'll um, do a two-week run. We'll fly to another part of the country, do stuff there, and then come back home. Or we'll drive. We do mostly driving now, which is not my preference, but but we do it all. When you are leading a worship show, do you get filled up doing that? The, the same way that you're filling up the people who are participating in the worship? Yeah, I, I do. I think, I mean, I, I don't know if you could say it the same way, but 
in in a same way, in a similar way, I would say, I love walking in the calling that God has put on my life. Like that's kind of what it comes down to for me. Is like He's called me here when I'm participating in the invitation He's offered me to lead others in worship. I feel so fulfilled. I feel like I'm doing exactly what I need to do. I feel like I can think clearly. I can articulate better. I don't know. It's just, it just feels like the place I'm supposed to be. And I think it's in a way, it feels like it's easier to worship God in those times um, because you're there with other people and you're leading them and they're worshiping. And it just like, doesn't matter if I'm singing the same song for a year straight, like seeing the way that people are connecting with God through the songs and the testimonies that I'm sharing. It's just, there's nothing like it. So it definitely encourages my faith to be doing it for sure. I think that would be really powerful. Yeah. Okay, so somewhere along this touring life of yours, you met and married your husband. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so when I first started touring, touring full-time in 2010, um, I actually hired my my now husband. at the time. He wasn't at the time, obviously. <laughs> um, I hired him to be my full-time bass player. He was recommended to me through some friends who, um, who were also, they were like fill-in players for me at the time. And I, I needed to establish my own band. And so they recommended I check him out. So I did, and I hired him. And he played for me for a year, year and a half. And he was liking me during that time. Uh, but I had some pretty strict boundaries of, about that, like dating in the band and all that. And um, not only did I have strict boundaries, but I was not interested in him at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he had long, curly hair. He was previously part of a, a hard rock band. So it was just like, it, the, I was not interested in dating an artist really at all. I'm a farmer's daughter. My dad grows sweet corn and onions in central Washington. And I was just, that was going to be my future was being on a farm married to another farmer. <laughs> so I wasn't, I wasn't looking at Chris that way at all. And I even tried setting him up with one of my friends, which kind of shows you how not interested I was. But anyway, we were off the road, not touring at one point, And um, we were at my brother's track meet over in Seattle and it was pouring rain, which is, not a surprise if you've ever been to Seattle before. <laughs> and he was holding an umbrella for me. And I just remember looking over at him at this one very distinct moment and thinking for the first time, like, oh my gosh, I think I might like you. <laughs> it's so funny how that switch can happen. I know. And it was a switch. I explained that to people. I'm like, it was as if our friend was in a dark room this whole time. And then God turned on a light and I could like see his character for the first time really clearly. He's amazing. So shortly after that, um, we started dating and, um, and then he quit playing for me and, uh, went off the road and he went to college. Then we dated about four and a half years. It was a long season. He got his EPA license, like right before we got married. So that was pretty exciting. Just like to walk through such a long season and, and get there. It was cool. So great. Yeah. We've been loving marriage now. He, um, his accounting business and CPA license, however you describe that, is he's he's developed his business in such a way that it's remote. So he does a lot of work from the road, which is pretty awesome. So we can do ministry together now, which is way better than apart. That sounds like it would work well. And you're not farming. Yes, no, right. not, <laughs> not farming. No, my dad is still farming, but I'm not. Okay. So you have five albums, which I think is incredible. And your latest one is Humid. Yes. And it has a more pop feel than yeah. your, your previous albums. Is that a hard space to live in between pop and Christian music? I haven't found that it is. Um, but I don't know. I You know, I exist in my world and the way that I do things every day. So it feels really normal and natural to me. Now, like if, when I, um, like if somebody comes to my concert... And they are expecting, like, it depends on what anybody's ex- expectations are, I guess. If they come thinking it's going to be like a, just a straight up worship night, worship songs. Like, that's that's not what they're going to get. I mean, they'll get a lot of worshipful experiences. But the way that I do a concert is I share some of my more pop songs, like Run the Race, or I don't know, those ones like, that are more upbeat up front. And then I lead them into a time of worship by the time we leave. So, and in the middle there, kind of, I share, I do a lot of sharing the things that God's been teaching me, invitations to trust in God, those type of things. And then at the end, we close with with some familiar worship songs. 
so it's definitely I, I enjoy doing kind of both worlds like that I think that's something that makes it uni a unique experience for me as an artist is that I um I don't just sing songs I've written I do share songs that other artists have, have recorded and released but I use my music as a means to say, hey, like maybe you've not been in the church or maybe you're unsure about Christianity. Like here's some fun music you can listen to that's positive. That's, you know, not going to make you feel like you should rip your eyeballs out or your ears out, you know. <laughs> um, and I'll be like, and then, and then this is a little bit about who I am and why I believe the things I believe. If you want to join me, I'd love that because I love this journey of walking with Jesus is, is a really amazing experience. And then if you've, if you've so chosen to, to join me in that, then let's like worship him now together. So it's kind of like this journey, I guess. So I like it. It's fun, fun for me. I mentioned that my girls are eight and 11 and it is really hard to find music that's appropriate for them. Either it's little kid music or it's just, you know, if you really listen to the words, you're like, this is not a great message for you. Right. Yeah. So I love your music for that, for anyone, but especially for you know, the younger, sure. younger generation. So thank you for doing what you do. You're welcome. I love that. I, I remember being those girls as a kid growing up and, uh, and looking up to artists like Nicole Simone and Zoe Girl and just like the influence that they had on my life. I'll always remember. So it's, it means a lot to me too. I had played your music uh, in the kitchen. My eight-year-old was in there with me. And I just said, you know, to our Amazon Echo, I said, play music by Holly Starr. Aww. And she did. And my eight-year-old kind of starts dancing around. And I said, do you like this music? It sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to interview this, you know, this woman in a couple weeks. And she Aww. goes, mom, she is famous. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I don't know how famous she is, but I think her songs are trying to make God famous. I think that's the point. <laughs> So cute. Oh my gosh. I so we that. had a really sweet conversation about you. I love that. I love that. Some of my favorite conversations I've had after concerts, because I always go to my table afterwards to meet people. And some of my favorite conversations I've been with the young girls, just the things that they see and experience. It's just really cool. The way that God's speaking to them is like so fresh, you know. I agree. I love I love those conversations too. And yeah. questions. For sure. Lots yeah. of questions in my head. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the Yes Necklace. I am so excited about this. When I found it, I was just, it, it's so unique. So tell us the story about its creation. Yeah. Well, my uh, mission statement, if you will, I guess, is from the beginning has always been to lead people to worship God. I mean, that's just, that's the heart behind what I do. And, and even in a more like tangible way, it's to encourage people to trust God. That's kind of the basis of why I do what I do. And uh, one of the reasons for that is because I struggle with trusting God. I mean, it's like super hard to just trust him with everything in life. And I don't know why it has to be that way, but it is. But I found that the more that I exercise trusting him, the more peace that I have in my life and, and the more I enjoy the life that God has given me. So through my music and through testimony, that's just, that's my passion. So I, I was sitting down with my husband and um, one of my friends uh, a couple years ago, we were at our house and I was really wanting to have a piece of merchandise on my table that, that represented my heart for what I'm doing and saying like, Hey, I don't want to just sell t-shirts and CDs. I mean, CDs obviously are my heart because it's my songs, but <laughs> it's not awesome for me to sell a shirt that says Holly star on it. It just kind of feels like it defeats the purpose. Um, so I wanted to have something that's really meaningful and that coincides with what I'm sharing in the concert. So I was just sitting there and I was like, it needs to be something simple, like with the word yes on it or something. <laughs> you know? And uh, my husband was like, that could be it, Holly. And I was like, what? Like I wasn't taking myself seriously. I was just trying to throw out an idea. And so the yes originally symbolized just, trusting God like we we every day we're faced with decisions and we can either choose yes I trust you God or no I'm gonna go my own way and that's just what it comes down to and um, I found that faith in general is the answer to that question too and, and it's pretty pretty simple so I started 
making necklaces, trying to figure out what materials and how I wanted it to be. It took a while to kind of figure that process out, but it felt like it was an idea that got inspired. So it took as long as I could to create the necklace in a way that I felt really good about. And in that process, I was doing some caregiving for my grandma, Star. So Star is my middle name. It was her first name. She had lost my grandpa a, a little, like a few years before this. Um, but her health started going downhill. And so um, I got to kind of help her through that, that transition. And I got the opportunity to see widowhood up close in a way I'd never seen before. And God, I just felt like was stirring my heart in a big way for women who have lost their husbands or I mean just even a a widower who had lost his wife too but obviously I'm a girl so I can empathize more with the women so so I I just remember one day driving to her house and um, going on my way to help her I started thinking about her and just like the the struggles that she's probably facing and it was as if God kind of gave me this clear picture of the sorrow that a widow goes through and it propelled me like to need to do something about it. Um, and I didn't know what that was. So for a long time, I was like, what, how can I do something that benefits widows, but also like I'm doing this music stuff and like, I just couldn't put the pieces together. Um, I was even trying to like sell tea at one time. Part of the proceeds would go to help widows somehow. And I just couldn't figure it out. So, so the two, the necklace and the widow ministry idea, those were separated for a while. But in that season of helping my grandma, I was like, oh, I'll give her a necklace to encourage her to trust God in this hard season that she's going through. And uh, so I gave her a necklace and to my surprise, she wore that thing every day. Like Aww. if you knew her personality, it would surprise you too. She would, she liked really big gaudy jewelry. So for her to wear something that was as simple and elegant as the necklace I think I have one on right now too yeah I was just like she it would just surprise me so anyway um she uh was getting pretty sick she had some pretty serious health conditions and so I knew that she didn't have like a ton of time left but I didn't anticipate her to just have an accident and then pass away in one day I mean that was that's never expected for anybody um but that's kind of what happened for her I was in Nashville songwriting a song that I had written for her actually which is a totally another part of the story um when I got the phone call that she had the accident and so I flew home and she by God's grace was I don't know if she was waiting for me or if God just wanted it to happen that way I don't know but I got there at like 12 30 at night and um, ran into the hospital and uh, got the opportunity to kneel next to her give her a hug and say some words like it's gonna be okay grandma I love you and then like not two or three minutes later watched her take her last breath and it's a moment I will never forget because I looked down and I saw still still she was wearing the necklace that I gave her Mm -hmm. and I was like how like what is going on like I'm my grandma who has inspired me in more ways than she even knows is is passing away. I just flew all the way from Nashville and just, I, it was just like so much going on. But in that, in that time, I felt like God was showing me very clearly, like not only was he inviting me to trust him now in the season that I was going to walk through without her in it, but also I felt like he connected those ideas like really clearly in my mind, like this necklace can be one to yes, encourage people to trust God, but to to encourage a widow because that matters to me. And, you, you know, we, we read all throughout scripture, God's heart for the orphan and the widow. And we hear so much about amazing organizations helping the orphan, but we hear nothing or at least cricket about um, any organizations in, uh, intended for widows. And I don't think that's intentional that people don't help widows. I think most of the time they just don't know how or what's the right thing to do in that situation because they're usually pretty unique. For me, it was like, God, I want I want to provide a way to just help the church remember the widow because it's in the word that you care about this. And I want I don't know how to do I don't know how to help all the time, but maybe this is an idea that can help stir people on to reach out in kind of a non threatening way. You know, you can buy a necklace wear one for yourself and then the second one is meant for and that's I didn't say this yet but I make the necklaces now and you get two when you buy one so the first one's for you and then the second one is for you to give to a widow um, just to encourage them that they're not alone and that 
that you see their life. Because for like my grandma, it was the little things I noticed that meant the most to her. Um, it was a phone call. It was somebody inviting her to lunch. It was just a little thing. So uh, this is quite literally a little thing that people can can give to somebody. You can even send it in the mail and say, hey, I'm thinking of you this week. Give you this as a gift to just encourage you that, that I'm trusting God in the season I'm going through. And I know how hard yours probably is. So here's an encouragement for you to do that too. I don't know, however it looks. But yeah, that's kind of a, where the necklace came from. And my, my, my goal with it is that more widows would be encouraged that they're not alone. And that even if they have a week where they don't hear a voice of any, the voice of any human, that people really are out there and do remember them um, in their, in their hardship. Well, I love that ministry for a couple of reasons, because you said, you know, it is so unique. There is not a lot uh, for specifically for widows. Sure. And um, second, because I had a grandma who was also a widow mm. and she pretty much wore the same kind of jewelry as your grandma. <laughs> yeah. She had a whole wall in her closet dedicated to some gaudy costume jewelry, but yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you for what you're doing. It's so uh, creative and meaningful. Thank you. That's what I hoped. I hoped that it was simple but meaningful. Holly, what is God doing in your life now? More on just like a practical level. Um, we are trying. We've not. We haven't bought a house yet. <laughs> so he's. I don't know if it's him or if it's just desires in my heart. But we're hoping that we can do that in the next season. And then the prospect of starting a family obviously would be awesome but that all has to be in his timing so those are things that are happening in our life currently um we are because it's tax season we're off the road right now so we don't start touring again until the end of april and then we'll be on the road the rest of the year um he's putting on my heart the potential to write a book about the yes necklace stuff so we'll see i'm i'm not going to try and push it um i really want whatever i create to be inspired by the spirit so i'm just kind of waiting for that assurance that it's what he wants um so maybe a book we're starting a tour called the yes tour that kind of coincides with the necklace and the message behind it um and that's going to officially start this year and that that's just going to be a tour that gives more attention to the widow and the, just the overall arching theme of trusting God. So I'm really excited about seeing how that comes together this next year. So that's, that's a couple of things that we're, we're excited about. You were talking about trust and I didn't even mention this, but trust is my word for the year. Oh, awesome. And I, when I was trying to figure out what my word was going to be, believe came up. And I almost picked that. And then I was like, no, I don't, I don't struggle with belief. Like I believe the trust, like that's the hard part. Um, so I boiled the definition of trust down to confident dependence. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. Cause that is a struggle. Like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Let him have every area yeah, of your life. Yeah. One of my life goals, I, I don't know, just one day I was thinking about this and like, what matters the most to me? Is it the worldly possessions, having this beautiful home or having everything in order? Things to be in order. <laughs> um, is it what, what is the goal by the time my life is over? I mean, I've had the opportunity. I witnessed my grandma pass away and then um, a year later watched my husband's father pass away. So life and how short it is has been really in front of me lately. So I've been thinking about that a lot. And I was just thinking like at the end of my life, do I care more about those things or do I care that I learned how to trust? And it's just like, there's no question about that. Like how awesome would that be to be able to learn how to trust? Then I feel like you'll get the fullness of peace and joy in life that Jesus offers us. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. It's a journey. <laughs> exactly. You are on a break now, you mentioned. What what does that look like for you? Your husband is probably deep in taxes, but what does that look like for you? Well, I I hand make all the necklaces for the yes necklace and uh our we sell them online while we're off season two. So those I'm making lots of necklaces. That's kind of like my goal is just to get not only uh keep up with the inventory that we need for the sales online, but then also create enough back stock that when we go back on tour I'm not having to make orders because sometimes we'll sell out and I'm like got all these ones to make when I get home from tour which is fine but I don't like having that hanging over my head like uh so yeah so I'm making a ton of necklaces I actually do help him a little bit um with some office work as well um and then just trying to stay inspired so I I usually when I'm off the road I get a lot of time to listen to 
podcasts or listen to sermons, that sort of stuff, because that's the way that I get fed the most is through, I love lectures and sermons. I don't know. It's just fun. So, And are you just writing all the time, just whenever that inspiration comes? Yeah. And yes and no. I, I'm not like the biggest passionate songwriter you'll ever meet so like there's definitely people who write all the time and then they just can't stop thinking about it for me it's a little bit more um organized and segregated so like I'll I'll song write like if if I have a, an idea that comes to my mind that I want to write then I'll sit down and try and pin some of those ideas out but more often than not I plan songwriting weeks where I fly out a co-writer which is usually my producer um and then we write for a week straight and just see what we can come up with so we sit down and I usually before a songwriting week like that I usually have like concepts that I really am passionate about trying to write a song about so like for example with the I wrote a song for my grandma the one that I was recording um, when they called me and I knew that I knew that I wanted to write a song for her and I kept having this this I don't know a vision sounds super hyper spiritual to me I don't know so but I had this like concept floating around in my head of the word say uh, like a sail sailing I just couldn't quite figure out why or how those would tie together um so then we sat down and I shared that with my co-writer and we fleshed out the whole idea so the song is called sailing and it's all about life and how she will keep sailing on and we will keep sailing on even though life passes in the midst of that so I, I love how that that came together so yeah, songwriting is definitely more um, intentional weeks of writing for me, but I gather concepts in the meantime. The last question that I ask all my guests is what is your favorite five? So what are five things that you are wearing or drinking or watching on TV that you yeah. want to share with us? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, one of our favorite shows that we're watching right now is uh, the British, uh, Great American British Baking, or not Great American, Great British Baking Show. <laughs> okay. Um, it's on Netflix. It's just so funny. I'm not usually into like cooking shows this much, but they're so funny that I just, I love to watch. And my husband actually likes it too, because the British humor is, is great. That's so, funny. Good. Yeah. So we like that. I got for Christmas, um, my mom got me an Instant Pop. And so I have been loving using that. That's been awesome. It's great for tax season when I'm making a lot of food. Do you have a favorite thing that you can throw in there? Um, there's like a, it's a chicken and rice, like fajita bowl mix thing. So there's like rice and chicken and spices and um, salsa. I think you put cilantro on it afterwards. It's just really good. I love That's it. That's great. Oh, I'm wearing wool socks. I love <laughs> wool socks. <laughs> My feet and hands get so cold all the time. So it's very chilly up here in the Northwest right now. So loving, loving my wool socks. Is that three? That's three. Do you have a brand of wool socks? Um, I like the smart wool socks. Mm, um, me too. I've got the, they sell like a pack of them from Costco that I get. Those were just cheaper to get so many of them. So I'll just try those. And they've worked pretty good. My favorite place to go shopping is Nordstrom Rack. I don't know if you guys have that. Where you I do, yeah. yeah. I get like all my clothes from Nordstrom Rack and Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a thrifty shopper? Are you looking for a deal? Um, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit not. I go either way. My husband's super that way. He likes to shop sales only. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that way. But I enjoy the pursuit of like finding something, you know, like, and that's probably why I like Nordstrom Rack. Yeah. Our fa my favorite food right now is pho soup. So it's like Vietnamese pho. It's so good. We eat it like all the time when we're home. Well, actually, when we're on tour too, it's easy to find on the road. So is it something that you make at home or something you grab? You go grab, yeah. Yeah, so it's, I, I've tried making it at home, but I can't do it. It's horrible. <laughs> it's not the same. I understand. Yeah, I need to go get some training from from authentic Vietnamese families or something. <laughs> How to make the broth because it's so good. Okay, I don't think I've ever had that, so I will. I'll add that to my list of things yeah. to try. Kind of like um, it's like the concept of like chicken noodle soup, really brothy with some noodles and meat. But we actually do tofu. That's a weird weird fact about me. But we 
<laughs> I'm not vegan or anything. I just like tofu in there. So yeah, it's rice noodles and like a beef broth and then tofu or chicken or beef, however you like it. It's just really good. Okay. That sounds really good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing those. Holly, tell people where they can find your music and where they can find you online and where they can grab a, a necklace. Yeah, you can listen to my music on pretty much any listening platform. So Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, any of those. And the necklaces, you can go to theyesnecklace.com. And then you can also see on there a video that captures the story behind the necklace in, I think, four minutes. So it's a quick, quick video. but um, something that I'm really excited to share with people. So you can order them and watch the video at theyesnecklace.com. Holly, thank you so much for coming on. I love what you're doing and I love how you're uh, honoring God and stepping into the calling that he has for you. I think that's so special and I love that you get to lead others in doing the same thing and trusting him. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you're doing to encourage women because it's, it's powerful. Thank you. I hope you loved hearing from Holly. If you guys haven't heard Holly's music yet, go listen now. I promise you won't be disappointed. And you guys, my yes necklace came in the mail this week. It is dainty and it is beautiful and it's perfect for wearing every day as a reminder to trust God. Watch Holly's video and order a necklace for yourself at theyesnecklace.com. And like Holly said, when you order one, you get a second necklace to give to a widow or anyone who could use some encouragement. As always, everything that we talked about can be found in the show notes for today's episode on girlstalkinglife.com. And also be sure to find me on Instagram at girlstalkinglife. While you're there, be sure to sign up for the Girls Talking Life newsletter. That will ensure that you don't miss an episode and that the show notes with all the links for everything that we talk about get delivered right to your email. Don't let the conversation stop when the show is over. Share your stories and start your own conversations with the girls in your life. Thanks for tuning in.